these two power supplies got sent me, to me by a, a viewer called Gerard in Turkey who said, um, I purchased two four output USB mains chargers on eBay and about six into hours into using one it gave out an almighty bang um, and uh, he just wondered if I wanted to get them and take a look at them and see perhaps what went bang. Well, hell yeah, I love shit that blows up. So um, here they are and this one is marked dead and I have to say the sniff test doesn't reveal an awful lot, so I think we're going to have to open this. Oh, circuit board is cascading onto my workspace everywhere. Ordinary screws, which is nice, and it does seem to be just screwed together, not glued together. Uh, Gerard did actually get a refund from the eBay seller who sold these after he explained that one of them had detonated forcibly. Oh yes, that's quite sooty inside. Oh yeah, that, that's kind of gone bang big style. In fact, it's, that must have been quite a loud bang because it's actually blown the end off the fuse. So what do we have here? We have a, what looks like a switch mode chip. We've got the incom incoming supply going via a fuse, which has detonated forcefully, through a bridge rectifier. Ew. Oh yes, I can smell it now. Um, then we've got the... some smoothing capacitors, 400 volt, 4.7 microfarad. Is that in parallel, I wonder, or is it a bit of filtering? I think it's just in parallel with that other one, which is probably also 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt. I think it is. The chip itself is, if I can wipe the suit off it, uh, let's see if I can read that. It's a chip rail CR5228. I think that's a fairly standard switching power supply. Now the question is, which bit has gone bang? I think the chip has gone bang. Let's uh, cut the rectifier off for a start and take a look at that because there, it's in the vicinity of where the little electrical explosion has occurred. We'll, we'll cut the fuse away to get access to it. Now, this fuse, if I show you this fuse here that it's really, really blown up and gone sooty inside, you'd think that with a fuse in line it would have actually just blown cleanly. Now, if I can grab a bit of paper here and show you what actually happens. If you have a standard glass fuse. There's a glass fuse with the end caps and the thin wire down the middle. And you try and break a mains fault. What actually happens is that this wire goes bang and it spatters. And it basically vaporises that wire and turns it into a metal vapour inside the tube. And you end up then that this tube will glow brightly very briefly big bright flash as it basically turns into a discharge lamp inside and that's what's happened here and it also um, coats the inside you can see when this has happened because the inside of the fuse if the fuse doesn't shatter or even if it does shatter you can see that it's gone very metallic looking inside and you can see that iridescent sheen in the surface because it's basically coated in metal in the inside so um, that's why normally um, in applications where you're dealing with high current you want a ceramic fuse filled with sand and the point of the sand is that because it surrounds the wire it absorbs the energy of the the break and the sand sort of fills in uh, and quenches the arc but that's not happened in this case so we've got uh, we've got a dead fuse here cut bits of dead fuse out we've got the rectifier let's see if it's it that's popped The rectifier has a skid mark on it, but I think the skid mark is from the adjacent chip. The rectifier itself looks okay, albeit skiddy. Uh, the flash has arced. It's caused arcing between the DC side of the rectifier, which is why it may have been so dramatic. This is looking more like it. If I just ease this chip out... If I can ease this chip out... I may not be able to because if it's a, not, I'm not able to actually snip the pins. But let's give it a go anyway. Oh, I think I may be onto plums here. No, 
tighten up, it's, uh, it's happening. Let's at very least hinge this up and see if it's got a big uh, hole in the bottom of it. It's not uncommon, th th these uh, switch mode power supply chips um, do tend to let rip with a bang when they go. Actually, you know what? I'm not seeing anything really majorly sooty around there either. It's not as if it's cracked the top off the chip. I don't know if it's blown out the side. Let's uh, wiggle that chip upside up and down till it snaps and then uh, we'll trim off the leads here and see if we can see any that... Uh, a hole. I'm not really seeing that. It's almost as if something has physically bridged uh, and it's not... Ah, uh, you know what? It may be that if the chip's gone short circuit, the tracks leading to it from the rectifier most notably this track here may have been what's actually detonated forcibly. It's acted like a fuse and that's what's made most of the skid mark. But that most probably started because the chip failed uh, and shunted out which then blew that track, which then caused little electrical inferno in here and caused the, the carnage here that's uh, left the inside of this case completely um, splattered and sooty looking. Hmm, looks good. So uh, other than that, so let's see if the, what the quality is like. It's got two diodes that are touching here, but it doesn't really matter because they're both into the same track and they're probably just in parallel. Um, it's got the output control chip, which is odd. It's obviously got some sort of smart function output here. Or maybe that's to control the optoisolator regardless of which output's actually being loaded. I'm not 100% sure about that. What's the number on the chip? I think we have to investigate with a little microscope. The number on the chip is, because it rather pleasingly does actually have a number this time. Oh, it's one of those ones that's sort of engraved and it's quite hard to read. Oh, that's very hard to read because it is just, uh, it's just the wrong angle to actually look at because it is laser engraved into the surface. No, I'm not going to be able to read that. That's, that's annoying, actually, because there is a number, but I can't read it. How annoying. What about the magnifying glass? Oh, it doesn't really help the fact it's got this sort of lacquer over it as well. No, I'm not 100% sure what that is. I don't know if it's just a generic op-amp or something like that, or if it's actually a smart chip to control the, uh, control, uh, the outputs. No, I'm not going to read that. That's just very, very lightly laser engraved on the surface. But anyway, getting back to the business side, which is the side that goes bang, it's got um, a fairly huge uh, anti-tracking line here. No slots, but good anti-tracking. It's got the capacitor that couples the sides for RF suppression. I wonder how good the transformer is. Uh, this is where I really should have had the soldier iron running. But uh, since it's not that critical that this is uh, saved, I'm going to try and crack the transformer off and we'll split the transformer and see what's inside it. Yeah, there's no subtlety going on here. Oh, there we go. Right, let's see what the isolation's like in between the two sides. It's not got that thing that I kind of prefer, and that is the heavy, super insulated sort of uh, winding that's added on over the top that is like fully, almost double insulated in its own right. This is kind of glued. Do I have anything I can smash this part with, with absolute brute force? Um, no, I think I may have to resort to electrical snips to actually smash things up a little bit. And even then, this is not how you're supposed to use snips, particularly good quality ones. Um, have I got anything I can smack this with? Pliers, anything? No. Uh, I'm not finding anything to uh, split this apart.
Oh, there we go. Let's uh, get some of this tape off. Autopsies are good. It's always interesting how things failed. So the bindings do look as though they have modest separation. Um, they don't look like they're going anywhere close to, say for instance, I'm guessing that's the primary side here. I'm not 100 sure, I can't remember. I, I, I never kept track of how things were, uh, what direction the pins were, which is a bit naughty, but let's uh, pull this winding off. It's certainly got good uh, separation. It's not too close to any of the other connections, which is good. That's always good. It's quite a beefy transformer as well. Where's the next bit of tape revealing the secrets inside? Is that going to come off? I'm not sure if that's actually a... Yes, it is. So a good few turns of that. Oh, actually, this looks like the high current output. Which is right up against... Yeah, that's maybe... I hope this isn't the high current output. That would be... Uh, up quite close to the um, primary side windings. Yeah, this looks like a very high current output, just really a few turns with a lot of connections, and that was right up against, if this is the output side, that was right up against the primary, so I'm not so keen in that separation, to be honest. That's uh, just failed, in my opinion, right there. But uh, this then, that may have been the sense winding, the one that was winded on top, the one for the feedback. Because uh, those power supply chips, these little chips here, tend to work on the basis that uh, they derive, they have a sort of, when you turn them on, uh, some resistors charge initially a capacitor, like probably this little capacitor here, until it's the voltage is high enough for the chip to kick in, and then it uses a feedback winding through a diode, possibly this diode, to actually run that... Um, to actually pump that uh, capacitor up and keep the supply. There should also be a suppression circuit under here. Oh, there it is. It is in place. It's got um, it's got its suppression circuit, which is the bit that uh, absorbs the, ne the reverse transient when the uh, transistor turns off, because that would uh, have potential to destroy the uh, transistor in the chip. So it's that's present in there, so it seems to be all present and correct. Not necessarily working, but present and correct. So let's uh, get the last wee bit off the transformer, which will be quite a high number of small turns, small diameter turns, because it will be the um, primary, the mains, switched mains side. Yeah. Quite heavy-ish, actually. But then I guess this is a fairly high power device, but yeah, quite a lot of turns of this, and this is the mains connection, and that is was right up against the high current secondary. So yeah, I don't actually favor that, because all you're relying on here is the insulation between these two layers of lacquer on these wires, and it's like microscopically thin. And uh, I'd rather see either, in the case of like a traditional mains transformer, you'd actually have a barrier in between the two, or in the case of many of the switch mode power supplies and good equipment, uh, they have something like a heavy... Uh, what's this? What is this? Oh yes, it's hand remember what it is. They have something like a heavy insulation wire wound over the top just because it's got the extra insulation volume. So yeah, uh, I'm not 100% sure why that failed. Um, but having said that, maybe it's just as well it did fail because it's not really up to the best electrical standards. Uh, in terms of the transformer isolation. But uh, that was an interesting teardown nonetheless, and uh, it gives me gives me a spare power supply to... Um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure I will use this one for anything, to be honest, given the isolation. But yes, interesting, so thanks for that, Gerard.